What's up, everybody? My name is Macon Adams, and I am um, a junior here at NC State University trying um, to teach you guys a little bit about what is the differences between a system and the surroundings and environment and thermodynamics talk, um, and then different types of systems that you can have in thermodynamics. This is for Dr. Pasquinelli's thermodynamics for textile engineers, and hope you get some entertainment out of this, learn something, most importantly, out of this. So, here we go. So, um, first we're going to talk about systems and the surroundings, and then also the boundaries. So I drew a little picture for you, so let me take it up for you. Hold on one second. All right, so, that's you. There you are. You're a nice little stick figure right now. You're happy, you're going about life, nothing's really wrong happening with you. You're pretty, pretty good off. So, you're the part of the system. If you're the system, we're going to talk about. You're the you're the thing we're trying to analyze. So whether it's the heat, um, amount of heat inside of you, how much energy you're creating inside of you, or energy is it, how much energy is inside of you, um, the flow rate, like of the ma amount of mass coming out of your system, whatever you're trying to look for, you you're the thing we're trying to analyze. So you would be defined as our system. Now going through life, you're going to, you're, you affect everything around you and everything affects you. So, we're going to zoom out. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice little sun, clouds, trees. Those are your surroundings. So, that's your environment. Um, it's, and it's basically, again, like it's what you, um, it's part of your universe affected by you, the system. And, there's a nice, there's always a, always a relations in every type of thermodynamics problem. Uh, system where you are, where whatever system you've got is affected by the surroundings or and vice versa. Um, now, there's a specific thing called the system boundary. Now, what would that be? Now, let's think about it. There's you again. <whistles> nice little smiley face. Look at that. And then there's the surroundings. Boom. Now, this, uh, let's think about this. If you are the system and that's the surroundings, what would be your boundary? Uh, any guesses? Maybe? No? Okay, so boundary would be your skin. It's a nice little you can see you can all you can see the quality of that skin there I drew. I took really took a lot of time into drawing that, but that would be your system boundary in this case. Um so I mean for a for particularly for a um human body that's an open system. So whether you like it or not, you're a system, you're an open system. It's a beautiful thing. Um because you got uh, open system is what's defined as um, a system where both mass and energy are transferred through um, the system to the surroundings and vice versa. So um, your skin, in this case, would be act as your system boundary. Um, that could be anything. Um, for another example, goodbye. Say goodbye to yourself. You're a nice little stick figure. Bye. Oh, bye. See you later. Okay, so open system, like I was saying, a body is an open system. That's one type of system we're going to be talking about. That's again where your mass and your energy are both transferred. So you got energy inside of you, heat's coming back in through, you get hot flashes, you get cold flashes. Girls, I know you do. And um, you sweat. Now, sweat, since you have water coming out of your pores or you want to eat something or sometimes you got to go to the bathroom, that's why that's the mass coming out of you. So, and you're eating, so you got mass coming into you. And that makes you an open system. Another type of open system would be like a jet engine or really any kind of engine. That's you got um, mass and energy coming out of that. Then you got things like a closed system. Now, a closed system is where you have energy going through, but you don't have any mass going through. So it'd be a lot like that refrigerator right there, right there. So it's closed right now. No, there's no mass. I, if I want to go get a Coke or something, that would have to open the door. That would become an open system because I'm putting mass into it. But right now, the way it is, this beautiful, nice NC State refrigerator, it is a closed system. And it's because it's getting uh, heat pumped out the back of um, the refrigerator. So energy is leaving, but there's no mass being transferred. Now, the, the third type of system, which... Um, you may be talking about in your class and ours we um, covered it a little bit but it's a 
basically nothing crosses that boundary. There's nothing happens. There's no mass, no energy, no nothing. So an example of that would be like a cooler. Um, it keeps all that energy inside. You don't want anything to change, and you put the lid on it. It's got to whatever you have in there is going to stay in there. So the cooler is an example of an isolated system. And I mean, the universe is too. So, um, so again, recap, you got your system for an example, like we said, in our case, nice little stick figure, whoever your name is, nice, there's to you, boom, you are the system. And it can be anything, again, it can be anything. But in this case, we're talking about an open system, and you are the system. Then you got your surroundings, your environment, a nice everything around you. That is um, what you what is affected by you, by the system. The environment is what's affected by the system. And then your system boundary, which in this case would be your skin, would be um, is what separates you from the rest of the surroundings. And we just went covered all those different types of systems, the closed, where there's energy going through but no mass, where there's the um, open system where there is both energy and mass going through and then the isolate system where there's nothing so hope that all helped out hope you got something from that and uh, see y'all later